Chase, we back with the blue futon out of the box or out of the wall. Well, first, I have my friend Mickey here. He just wants to be with me today, so he's going to be with my review for as long as he takes. But anyway, out of the box or out of the wall, you ever want to call it, we have this Czechoslovakian movie, uh, Marketa Lazarova. So, have I seen this before? No, but it is a two-hour, 45-minute black-and-white movie with Czech and German. Let's go see this Criterion Collection movie. Oh yeah, he's a good boy, isn't he? Yeah, he really wants to be part of the video today. But anyway, what is this movie about? I want to read the synopsis on the back because when watching this movie, I really didn't know what it was about. But it is apparently a feud between two rival medieval clans in a fierce, epic, and meticulously designed of clashes of Christianity, blah, blah, blah. You know, then it goes on and on. Do I like this movie? Yes and no. Uh, I did look at Rotten Tomatoes. Some of these older movies, I like looking at Rotten Tomatoes, see what the reviews actually are. And this is like 100% uh, critics and like an 87% Rotten Tomato. Could it change last time I checked? But I really doubt it. But I think it is a not a boring movie. But it's a weird movie where if you don't know the source material, what is going on, you can be a little bit confused about the editing the directing style of timelines of flashing back and forth with some of these characters. And you can get kind of confused with what actually is prescribing on screen. For example, like I said, with a lot of these older movies, I do love not having CGI and all having the landscape, great cinematography, great directing, seeing the real open landscape, seeing the muddy, gritty waters in black and white and everything happening just in this vast open land. And on these hills and everything like that. And I do enjoy that style of filmmaking. Of understanding what is happening on screen. And not relying on fakeness of the actors. Of like I think there's a tree going to be there. And everything like that. I think an arrow is coming that way. This would be an R-rated movie. With some nudity, violent language. So it's like a kind of a normal battle sequence movie. In Czech. Like what is it? 65? 1967. Sorry about that. But. Like I said, it looks great. I think it's acted okay. There are some funny scenes where if you're watching people like walk on the road, they'll like accidentally stare at the camera and you're like, okay, that's a little bit of a mess up, everything like that. But other than that, I was confused with this movie about what I was watching and why these clans are actually cla uh, clashing. Maybe you don't really need to know why these clans are clashing, but the timeline and everything happening because there's like a weird priest character with the lamb. There's a uh, father and a daughter, and the daughter's supposed to go to a church and be a virgin, but something bad happens to her, and she gets abducted, and there's a family class with that, and there's like the one-armed brother with the brother with that virgin, and then what's happening with that family and that family on the hill is that dad pissed off at the son for having sex with the virgin and everything like that. Then you would have this German prince who is actually having sex with a whore, from that clan and then the German father gets upset and that son does something else in his own in his own universe if you want to put it that way because his story gets really weird of flashbacks of him like walking through this muddy you know environment and then he has scratches on his face the next scene he doesn't and he's like fighting someone and then he's with that priest with the dead lamb all of a sudden. You're like, where are we actually at? Like, where are we walking in this story to get these locations to these spots? Then there'll be random locations where, like, the camera is God. And you don't know if, like, it's all in their head or is God actually talking to these people. So I'm going to guess the source material is vast. And I guess it doesn't help with watching the movie with subtitles and kind of going on. Because then there will be also some weird camera angles of, like, goes super zoom into the sun and super zoom into other stuff and you're like okay i understand what you're trying to do there so the biggest flaw for me is not understanding where some of these characters are going what they're doing what their goal is and the overall conclusion of what we're doing because like i said there's way too many odd characters just spit it out throughout this movie where you're like what's the point of this priest what's the point of this family what's the point of this one of our brother what's the point of this virgin, what's the point of this uh, whore, if you want to put it that way? Because they, they call her a whore in movie, but I really don't think she is. But she's the one having sex with the German prince. And they have a love triangle as well as the virgin and one of the other Czech 
brothers. And like I said, there's a lot of stuff happening in this movie. But I was never bored with it. But I was also confused because it's in like two parts. I thought it was supposed to be in three parts. But it's only in two parts. And there'll be random stop edits in like, you know, text of like, Bernard is doing this, 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 and this, this, this isn't happening. I'm just like, okay, maybe I'm just confused with the source material and what is actually happening on screen. But I was never bored with this. That's the weird thing. It was like, I was confused what was happening of like, how did this character get there? Where where are we in these universes? Like, how far are we? Because there's like German and Czech. So I'm like, what what's actually happening? And like I said, maybe I was just confused with the storyline. I was never bored with it, but I was just like, what's happening on screen. Marketa Lazrova will receive a three out of five with futons. It goes at 60%. So see the critics news scores gave this one. So that's correct. 100% with the critics, 12 of them and 87% with the audience score and over 500 of them. Like I said, I mean, I'm curious with the critics if they're actually give like a perfect score. Is it more of like the three and a half out of four Everything else you can't really tell because it just says positive, 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 positive. One gave it a neglected masterpiece, an A+, plus, and we have a 9 out of 10, a 4 out of 4. I don't know. Uh, like I said, never bored with it, but I don't know. I don't know. Didn't have it didn't it didn't grasp me as much as some other people. But anyway, do you agree with the sixty to eighty seven the hundred? Chase like the blue futon. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me think Futon Topia, you blue Tonians. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Peace and love, peace and love. And did you have you seen this movie? This movie this review is probably not gonna get a lot of reviews, but hey, I love all of you.